Hello, welcome everybody. This is Crunchy. Today we are in Train Simulator World 3 at London Paddington Station. This site has been the London terminus of services provided by the Great Western Railway and its successors since 1838. Much of this main station dates from 1854 and was designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel, that great British entrepreneur. After playing Train Simulator Classic last week, we've moved up to 3. Found out that if you'd bought previously Train Simulator World 2 or Train Simulator World 2000, which I did, a lot of the stuff that you bought, the DLC that you bought, for that game will work with this it won't be as high quality as the native train simulator world 3 stuff but you can still play it this is my very first attempt at a full timetable you'll see that the 3d marks out three places over there on the platforms you can choose between three of these services we've got platform 10 the service to reading the due to depart in two minutes uh, i've got the graphics turned up a bit um, over what you can achieve directly through the game. So yeah, we see these GWR services. Got this one here. One's just departing there. I'm not sure if that was one of the ones we meant to take. But I'm hoping to do a fairly short one. This one's going to Slough. Uh, so I think we'll jump on this one here. So we've earned some reward by using the cab door. That wasn't too difficult. Uh, madam, could you excuse me please, because I, I fancy being the driver of this. So here we are, we're sitting in the driver's seat. This train is a semi-stopping service to slow. Get things set up, ready for departure. We'll be heading out shortly. Okay, so we'll be heading out shortly, so thankfully there's still some guides about what to do. Despite this being a timetable service, and I've done some training of course, done a lot of the training. Obviously the graphics in this version of Train Simulator are, well, more up to date. This is because it uses DX12, I believe. And I found out the reason why Train Simulator Classic does use multi-threading is just that it's restricted to using DX9, which holds it back. But they are working on the core of that game as we speak, or as I speak. And hopefully, if everything goes to plan, they will be upgrading the um, the graphical requirements of that and hopefully it will improve what can be done with that engine to make it smoother. In its core, they are working on the core service. This is a DX, obviously, is part of the core part of the game, the APIs and everything. So anyway, we've got, I've opened the doors to load the passengers. You can see the views out the front here are pretty good. I, I like the graphics on this, looks pretty realistic. The lighting is quite good. That's, I think, must be the where we are now. This is a uh, pressing button nine, and that's basically the track that we've got going west. So I'm using just uh, keyboard controls with this. So we've got all the passengers. I can see. Press T for the timetable. You can see what's happened and what's to come. So we're waiting till 9.46 now. We've got like 20 seconds to go. Use the exterior views here of course. To look about the train which I guess is a bit of a kind of a cheatish thing. See there's the timetable, closed doors, loads of passengers. So there we go, it's 9.46, we can get rid of the timetable now. Close the doors by pressing the blue button or you can use Y and U I believe to open and close the left or right sided doors. So we're just going to uh, press the buzzer twice and that allows us to press A to throttle up and get out of here. So thanks you for joining me here on this complete timetable journey out of Paddington to Slough. So the next stop is Ealing Broadway, which we have to be there at 9.55 on the dot. A distance some of some 5.3 miles. I 
So yeah, quality of graphics is better. Realism, uh, just as good. I mean, the thing about the Train Simulator Classic is it's so well supported with mods and community. And I didn't realise, you know, train driving and train spotting and all this kind of thing is still so popular. Just came back from my local uh, news agents in town and found there is still a plethora of magazines on the subject of railways, historical railways, modern railways, the old days of British Rail. I've also started to reading, uh, started reading Christian Walmar's British Rail book, which is a, a great read for any train of enthusiasts of, uh, of British Railways. He doesn't pull any punches, but it gives you a lot of background history about how British Rail was formed from the Big Four. Uh, that's, you know, Southern Railway, London North East, LMS, Great Western. But anyway, here we are on our journey. We've got a speed limit of 40, so we'll try not to exceed that. We've got a basically one brake throttle handle here in the cab of this loco. So this is a British Rail Class 166, uh, called a Networker Turbo, a diesel multiple unit. The trains were designed as a faster air-conditioned variant of the Class 165 Turbo, intended for longer distance services. They were originally known as Networker Turbos to distinguish them from electrically propelled members of that family. Today the 166s, alongside the 165s, are normally referred to as Thames Turbos or just simply Turbos. So obviously you've got to obey all the signals as well. Thankfully you've got some, in the hood we've got uh, signal markers. I think you probably turn the hood off if you're super good at driving trains. So the next signal is an, like an amber, a yellow, in 400 yards. And we've got a limit of 50 mile an hour in 300 yards. I don't think there's any risk of us breaking that. But yeah, scenery's quite good. As we come out of West London, with a quick look at the map there, the route map. Let's see what you can get by pressing 9. So we're here, and I think that was Ealing Broadway shown on the map there. So we've got a red. Going to take off the throttle. We're just going to sort of coast for a bit. And it's gone to yellow, so we can apply some more throttle here. limit is now what 50 but it's going to be 80 and 700 yards or so doesn't seem to be any windows you can open in here so I'm assuming it must be air conditioned so Ealing Broadway got to be there 955 that gives us what six well five minutes to get there basically a bit of a downward slope here 0.4 percent downward slope but we've still got the throttle on almost full. I think there's uh, seven bands of power on this loco. I haven't come across any AWS automatic warning system in this in this game, this this simulator. I don't know if that's because it's off by default or I've got it turned off in the options or something. But I've never seen it as an option. There's no side views here. See all the diesel smoke coming out the top of the uh, loco there. Another three and a half miles to go until Ealing Broadway. The next signal is a yellow. Here comes an HST on the other track. I used the horn and got a reward. These trains replace the Class 117s, Class 119s and the Class 121 and they are capable of 90 miles an hour or 145 kmh. Nowadays the majority of the 166s are based in Bristol while many 165s remain in the Thames Valley. So thanks to Wikipedia for that info. So as you see we're getting um, experience points by driving under the speed limit and certain other things. See a funny change in the note of the engine there, which I don't know why that was, because there wasn't a sort of gear change or anything like that. Maybe it was the incline in the hill made the engine work harder. I don't know. Internal cameras, external cameras. Sorry, didn't mean to press that, so we'll just press escape and get rid of that. 
So still four, three and a half minutes to go. Well, three minutes to go now until we get to Ealing Broadway. Hopefully if we're going to be on time. And I'm hoping to be on time in this, uh, this journey. I'm not really sure how far out Slough is from Paddington. But it's uh, not going to be that far, is it? Paddington to kind of Windsor-ish. External views there it does get a bit noisy in the external views. Apologies if that's too loud for you there. Yeah, so as I say, I've uh, bumped up the graphics a little bit, over above beyond what you can get within the game by making the uh, draw distance further. Give a bit of a pip here. Just keep people away from the edges see what station that was so the yeah the hood on this trans simulator world 2 and 3 doesn't really show like a track lay like it doesn't train simulator, well, train simulator classic so you don't really know all the junctions and everything that you're passing through unless you look about looks like we're catching up on another train on the track on the left there looks like another HST yeah, it is. Got the throttle off, so I'm kind of coasting along here at 39 miles an hour. More points for driving under the speed limit. So you can see the blue marker just ahead of in the station there. So I'm going to start applying a bit of level 1 and 2 braking. Now I've got full service on. You can see the area marked out just ahead where we have to stop to get within the correct space on the platforms. That's it, right up press to open the doors, you can either press the buttons inside or you can, as I say, the Y and the U keys, you get a little beep there, there's another, another 166 coming in now, on the other track, on the other platform. you can see the actual realistic um, LCD screen saying that this is the journey to Slough. So looking at the timetable, should just lock the doors. Press, don't forget to press the buzzer twice, the guard buzzer. Once, twice. And... Give the horn a bit of a pip. And we've got to be there in five minutes. It now says open and close prompts will no longer appear. It's up to you to action the doors at further stops so they won't warn me.
the limit is still, ooh, what, 90 odd miles an hour? So if we get this going as fast as we can, we should hopefully stay within the timetable limits. Let's get it up to maximum, that's it. Yeah, I don't really know why the AWS isn't on. You can zoom in on the dials if you want to. So, 3.1 miles to go. And we've got to do that in four minutes. Should be doable. Yeah, these leaning out the window shots are quite nice. Looks like there's an HST coming up behind us there on the left. We'll be going on the express tracks over there, I guess. So yeah, I could turn the graphics up a bit more, but I don't like my graphics card to get too hot. don't like it to run at over 75 Celsius, really. Just to keep it in good health. So yeah, with this I'm getting, I'm running it at about 72, 73. It's a 2070S by the way. Give these people a blast. So yeah, these are obviously the suburban tracks here on the right hand side here, the express tracks is another HST. There it goes. Yeah, they're on the faster tracks on the outside there. Yes, altogether a very enjoyable experience. It's not intense, it looks nice, it looks, feels realistic. Give these a blast. Where's that? Didn't catch that either. Be nice if it told you as you went through places, wouldn't it? Yeah, a tiny bit of lagging, stuttering. Not a lot of scenery out to the right of the train nets, all over to the left. On the, well, I guess the southern side. Easing off on the throttle now. There's a skill in this, all it looks like there's a freight train waiting at some lights there, on the right. He's obviously been held up. Oh no, there's no loco on them. They're just obviously waiting for a loco or something. As I'm not an expert train person, so forgive me if a lot of stuff I seem a bit ignorant about the railways in Britain. I'm just an ordinary rail traveller with a slight interest in running railways but I'm no expert and never worked at the railways so here we are put a full service on the brakes when there's only 250 yards to go he's off on them now there's the blue marker which I presume you can all turn off if you want don't want all these what would you call them Augmented reality things stuck on the outside in the 3D scenery. There goes a near high speed train past. I'm going to stop just here. A double yellow awaits just ahead, so we're going to open the doors. Which obviously beeped to warn passengers. Now you can read this here on this LCD. First train is the 1002 to Slough, which is us. We're on time. And the service is formed of three coaches, which it is. Following us is the 1012 Hayes and Har Harlington train. So we have to leave here at 10.02 on the dot. It's funny how nobody's ever got any laptops or luggage or bags or anything. 
I suppose it's not a people scenario. I mean, they're varied enough. A lot of people seem to wear the same thing. Animations of the people isn't fantastic, but it's it's okay, and they look and they look pretty good. Down here, let's get ready to close the doors by pressing Y, or the button on the side you could use if you wanted to. And away we go. So we're due at Hayes and Harlington at 10.05, a distance of some 1.8 miles. I don't know if this is an automated voice talking to the passengers inside. You can ride as a passenger in Train Simulator World 3 if you want to. But yeah, I thought it worth getting for the £11 I paid just so that I could use all the old stuff that I bought for Train Sim 2000. Us Train Simulator World buyers were pretty hacked off with uh, DTG, that's Dovetail Games, because, you know, they quickly brought out Train Sim World 2 and then Train Simulator World 3, and this wasn't great at first, but it's improving. There's just been some DLC released, well, just yesterday, in fact, just a few locos, some British locos and American locos, I think. But there's a lot more DLC to buy for me, even though I've got quite a bit. I'll show you what I've got in another video, maybe. I've got quite an extensive collection, but it's possibly less than, I don't know, a quarter or a third of the total amount of stuff that's available. Workshop items don't really exist for this game. I don't know it's because it's the Unreal Engine for this, I, but there's no workshop items. There are other people that supply stuff for the game, um, but I think mainly the stuff comes from DTG themselves. They've got a red signal ahead. So we've got to make sure we don't run the red and get a spad, a signal past the danger, or that game will be over. Let's now change to a yellow, 650 yards ahead, so we can put the throttle up to full on 7, which it is. Hayes in Harlington is now 0.7 of a mile away. We're already a bit late. Well, we're not a bit late, but we're going to be late, I think. We've got three seconds to get there on time and still 900 yards to go. And there's a red at the station or just after the station. Probably proceeding a bit too slowly and a bit too cautiously here. You can see the blue marker ahead. Getting to be confident on the brakes and the throttle is, is a little tricky. Knowing where your braking spots should be and how much to apply at what speed and all this. And this is one of the key elements of the game really. And also key to running a good timetable as well I think and a good service for the passengers. So here we are, we've come to a stop, a little bit late, get the doors opened. So yeah, we're, we're okay, this is, you know, 30 seconds late-ish, it's alright I guess. The key obviously to making the time with go faster between the stations where, where limits allow. So 
So I'll wait till everybody's gone body. I like the reflections on the body of the of the train. They're quite nice. I'm not sure about the glass. The glass could be better. I mean, it looks like a perfectly crystal clear screen in front, obviously, which it wouldn't be. So that could maybe do some work. I don't see any options to uh, to improve that and the graphics options or fiddling with the engine any, which of course uh, DTG do not um, approve of and certainly don't recommend. So let's give the guard buzzer a buzz and let's make our way to West Drayton. We have to be there in a minute and a half, and it's 2.3 miles away. I think I also subsequently learned that you can start putting the power on the, the juice on the throttle a bit sooner. Because I'm like holding it in the gears, hold, hoping that the power and the torque will move the train um, ultimately quicker, but it doesn't seem to work out that way. I think as soon as you can get it through the gears by applying more throttle the better because you can see after three or four really starts getting that pulling sound from the engine so I'm kind of hanging back in the gears really and I don't think I should be So I think, yeah, at this point we're going to start to lag behind in the timetable here because it's now almost uh, 10.09 and we've still, got, we've still got two miles to go. You can have some drive-by views here by pressing keyboard number 8. And I don't think there's any reverb in these tunnels. If you pip the horn, which I don't do, but if you did, you'd see there's no like reverb on the tunnels. Well, none, none that I've noticed anyway. So yeah, coming up to where. Uh, 10 minutes past 10 we're a bit late we've got a red so I've come off the throttle just to coast a little bit and see if the signal will change back to a caution yes it's done that so that's good so we start applying the throttle again we're on a bit of a downward incline as you can see 0.1 percent incline as we pass another 166 going the other way three carriages so coasting along again here at 52 mph so I'm guessing yeah with West Drayton being at 700 yards I think the stop sign must come at the end of the platform or just after we're straighted. As you can see we're uh, two minutes late. So timetabling is going a bit awry at the moment. We're applying some braking now. Level two full service I'm going to overshoot the platform mm. Mm. <laughs> it's about 10 yards behind 9 yards so get the doors open let's have a look and see how bad that is let's get 
get the view sorted out. It's, mm, it's not too bad. It's alright, I think. A bit late-ish. We're getting on that way. I can't hear I can't hear the automated voice at least I assume it's automated. So you can see we're O five to slow. On our display. Let's get these doors closed. Now Love doors. Don't forget to do the guard buzzer. Two of those. It seems to take an eternity to start moving. I don't know if I should be ramping it up already. I'm going to try and do them slightly earlier. Yeah, you see when you get to gear three whatever it is, so the transmission into three, it only, then you start getting a, you know, a pulling noise from the engine, a working noise. Anyway, so we've got it up to six. So, where are we? So we're here, and we're going there. So 1.4 miles, we're going to, is it Iva? Eva? Local residents, please forgive. I've not been there. And we've got no real limit on, just like 90 odd miles an hour. And we're going slightly downhill. So hopefully we should be able to get a bit of a turn of speed going here. And make up for some lost time. So I should have been at either... either at 10.13 and we're already a minute and a half late almost. Beautiful sunny day here in West London. Come on, that's it. There's already point eight of a mile to go so hopefully we shouldn't be too late. Yeah, the HUD I think is quite functional, well done. It's um, slightly better than the HUD that's in Train Simulator Classic. So it has a more functional look and feel to it. It's got all the information that you need, I think. See again, I think I'm slowing down much too early. I mean, we're not even 600 yards here, so I have to put it back on now. Come on. Oh, yeah, you see it there. It is there. 300 yards to go ish. An achievement has been unlocked. Achieving gold. I don't know what I did to get that, but anyway, I've got it. Full service on with the brakes. Come on. We are two minutes late. It still says we're on time on the uh, on the customer screens anyway, so I suppose that's something. Yeah, I do like the smoke effects, they're pretty good.
hear the uh, door sounds so another 10 seconds or so we can close the doors and get on our way we're now on level ground right lock doors closing doors pressing the buzzer let's see if we can do better on the throttle this time come on move what the hell right I've got it to tail already hey this is bare the four yeah five six and we're not even at the end of the platform yet Paul supposed to be on level ground we're up to the seventh top gear as it were come on now gathered 8,570 points not bad here comes an HST down the line oops <laughs> got on the route let's have a look which way are we going now did we come from there are we going there no because I think the yellow one is us and the one ahead is the one on the right and going to be at least two minutes late here as well I would think at uh, Langley oh it's got those speed little things that are a joke then we can't even reach can't even get above 60 mile an hour unless I'm not driving it efficiently enough which is entirely possible Right, coasting at 54 mph, 700 yards to go. Yeah, I'm not going to put the brakes on too early. Yeah, 400 yards is okay. Right, braking two, one. 30 mile an hour, I'm reaching the platform or more. So, braking two, full service. Should stop. Oh, uh, uh, maybe, hopefully. Hmm. Maybe a bit too far. And we are two and a quarter minutes late ish, or two minutes late. Doors open. passenger information screen still says we're on time so that's kind of okay maybe we've got a two minute leeway or something I don't know there goes a non-stopper So yeah, possibly two or three minutes late for that one. Let's get the front view again. Clock the doors. Do the buzzer. Do it. Put the throttle on. Next stop is Slough. Which I think is our ultimate destination. Boys and girls, ladies and gents. So we'll go slight downward incline here. It's 
so we're up to maximum now oh there goes the GWR Express Point nine miles to go to Slough. I wonder if any of the royal family would be getting on, because that's near them, you know. Nice outside views. So I've got the thing going to 50 mph, so hopefully the 1.3 miles to slow won't take long, but we should have been there at 10.22, let's have a look at the route map. So yeah, if that's slow, I'm obviously going, I don't understand those maps. Looks like I'm travelling in an easterly direction, if that's got as north up on the map, I'm not sure if it does as north as up. We're already, we're going to be two minutes late, at least. Hopefully I'm not be marked down too much for that, for that uh, tardiness. So yeah, I'm looking into getting these train sim things as a, an ongoing thing. I'm enjoying it so much. I'm not sure if I'll be able to afford many of the DLCs, but we'll see. Maybe get a one or two next month, maybe in April. So, 400 yards to go. Got full service. Whoa! I think I'm exceeding the yes, the junction uh, speed there, maybe. Got a red light coming up because you know we're at the buffers, and this is the final stop. Not hit the buffers. Full service, there we go. Stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Slough. Please alight as this is the terminus. So, open both sides doors. We have to uh, get the reverser into off, not reverse. Uh, so, that's kind of forward is off, and turn off the master key. Ah, oh, thanks, missus. So, that's it. Guess we've got to get out now. I think we've got to go over there on the platform, it says. So, I'll uh, open the door. Which is a sliding affair. Just close it again, make sure no uh, joyriders get in. And, uh, I'll just see if I can get along here. Uh, excuse me, I'm the driver. Uh, ex excuse me. Ex excuse me, I am. I am the dri I'm a driver here. I'm an employee. Okay. Right. So thanks for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that little timetable run out here to Slough from Paddington. Um, you can see I kept to the speed limit kind of all the time, except the very very end. There it took 44 minutes. We've driven 18.25 miles. My parking was okayish on the platforms, I think. So, thanks for joining me here. Um, please like and subscribe if you'd like more content like this. This is a Crunchy Podge of the Bear signing off for now. Bye.